Hello everyone! Today we are going to take a look at The Shallows, starring Blake Lively and directed by... Oh, here we go. Jaume Couliet Serra. In the likely event I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. Miss Lively plays a woman named Nancy who has gone to Mexico to enjoy some time surfing at a secluded beach where her recently deceased mother used to surf. She was supposed to go surfing with a friend, but her friend got hammered the night before and is stuck in the hotel with a massive hangover, but Nancy says, fuck it, I'll just go by myself. But she does meet a couple of young men at the beach who seem like nice guys, so she's not entirely alone. At the end of the day, when the sun starts to set, the guys start to head back to shore and Nancy says, I'm just gonna hang out for one last wave before heading in. This proves to be a bad decision, as before she can catch that one last wave, she is attacked by a massive great white shark. She survives the attack, barely, but she loses her surfboard in the process and is stranded on a small hunk of rock about 200 yards away from shore. So close, and yet so far. And with no one around to help her, Nancy has to find a way to reach the shore without getting torn apart by the shark. So this Jaws reboot was not at all what I expected. Well, okay, it's not actually a Jaws reboot, but it might as well be. It sometimes feels about as silly as some of the Jaws movies. This massive shark has left the deep waters of the ocean and come to the shallows of this beach, hence the title, The Shallows, and it apparently had some unfortunate encounter with humans before, and it still has a spear or harpoon or something stuck in its jaw, and this has apparently made it very angry, and it has decided all humans must die. This shark is out for blood, and he will not stop until every last one of those human motherfuckers is dead. He wants his bloody revenge, and by God, he shall have it! You think I'm joking, but that's basically how this movie goes. He keeps circling this islet that Nancy is on, not stopping to rest or to go get food or anything, and this takes place over about two days. That is one dedicated shark. There is a lot of silliness in this movie. A lot of silliness. There's a scene where this drunk guy wanders onto the beach and Nancy tries calling for help, but he doesn't realize she's in trouble because he's drunk and doesn't speak English. Or maybe he just doesn't care, it's hard to tell. But he spots Nancy's surfboard sitting in the water and thinks, ooh, I'm gonna take that. And this motherfucker gets sliced clean in half by the shark. A little too cleanly, really. You would think getting torn apart by the jaws of a shark would not leave such a neat divide between your legs and your torso, but... That's what happens to this guy, and the last time we see him, his torso is slowly crawling up the beach, leaving his legs behind. Man, that looked goofy. It also gets a bit predictable now and then. As soon as Nancy tells the guys, you go ahead, I'm just gonna stay out here for one last wave. Here we go. We all know what's coming now. The movie also gives away one character's death right off the bat. The first thing we see in this movie is this little boy walking down the beach, kicking a soccer ball around, and he spots a helmet floating in the water with a GoPro attached. He picks it up, plays the video, and he witnesses the camera's former owner getting the shit ripped out of him by the shark. Then we flash back a couple of days, and what do we see? A guy wearing a helmet with a GoPro on top. Oh gee, I wonder what's going to happen to him. We've gone past the point of trailers spoiling the movie, now the movies spoil themselves! But while this movie does have its faults, and it is very silly, it kinda works. And I'll tell you why it works. Blake Lively. She sells the shit out of this movie. No matter how silly it may be, she is going to put everything she's got into this performance, and it is really good. When she's watching the shark's behavior, trying to find a way to outsmart him, or when she's crying out in pain because she's got this huge gash in her leg that she has to attempt to keep shut by making a rudimentary suture out of her own jewelry, that, that, oh... That was kind of hard to watch. Or when she's passing the time by conversing with an injured seagull that has also taken up residence on this little hunk of rock in the middle of the water. Steven Seagull, she calls him. It's, it's like her spirit animal or something. But yeah, throughout all of this, she is just giving it her all, and it's really hard not to like it. 
It does take a while to get going. The first 20 minutes or so of this movie were a little boring. Through no fault of Miss Lively, she was fine. It's just the story wasn't all that exciting up until that point. She hits as a ride to her mom's secret surfing spot, surfs for a bit, chats it up with the two guys she met on the beach, has some lunch, has a phone conversation with her sister and her father talking about, oh, why'd you drop out of medical school? I know you're sad that mom died, but come on, she'd want you to keep going and on and on and on and oh my God, I don't care. I'm sitting in that theater thinking this movie is only 90 minutes long and it's going to be the longest 90 minutes of my life. But once the shark showed up and it finally got going, I was in. It was incredibly suspenseful. I was totally rooting for Blake Lively and her spirit animal. It was a fun time. As far as the direction, it was pretty good for the most part, but there was this one weird thing that Halme chose to do. This movie has pop-ups. I'm not sure what else to call them, but whenever she's browsing her cell phone or making a call or even looking at her watch, it displays whatever she's looking at or who she's talking to over on the side of the screen like it's this weird picture-in-picture -picture thing. And I thought it was kind of stupid, honestly. Uh, this is really just a personal taste thing. I mean, some people might enjoy it, some might not. I didn't like it. Overall, it has a few moments of silliness and it takes a while to get going, but Blake Lively absolutely killed it in this one and I had fun. I don't think I would pay full price for it, but as a matinee, sure, go for it. There are far worse ways to spend 90 minutes. And that's about all I have to say about The Shallows. So until next time, take care.